So, good evening, uh, everyone. I'm going to talk about thinking in blockchain. You've probably heard design thinking, you've probably heard uh, system thinking. I'm going to talk to you about uh, blockchain thinking. And I'm also going to talk about a 90-day personal blockchain mastery plan. So, four very simple things that I want to talk about this evening. Let me just get this to work. Yeah. Four very simple things that I want to talk to you about. One, what blockchain really means in today's world. Two, what is blockchain thinking and why do you need to embrace it? Third, how to think in blockchain, because no one taught you how to think in blockchain. And fourth, how to make 2019 your best blockchain year ever and professionally crush it. I mean, here's the thing. When I talk to you today this evening, I'm going to put on my coach, my mentor hat, and I want to give you a little bit more selfish perspective as to how you as professionals, how you as individuals, how you as technology leaders can make the best and most of blockchain this year and beyond. So let me talk about the four steps to personal mastery first. I, I, I said I'm going to give you a 90 day plan to personal mastery. Let's talk about the four steps. Step one is awareness. You've heard about blockchain, you've heard about crypto, you've heard about Bitcoin, you've heard about Ethereum, you've heard about FinTech, you've heard about all the good things that were happening out there. That's awareness, good. Step two is knowledge. You're here in this conference, you're here at 6 o'clock uh, in the evening, and we are like way overboard. That's good, so that's knowledge. But you also are gathering knowledge from a lot of other places though. The reading you do, the videos you take a look at, the product information that you look at, all that good stuff, so you're there. Step three is then development, which is a learn-do cycle essentially. Learn, do, learn, do, learn, do. You learn something, you do it. You learn something, you put it into practice. That's your step three. Now, if you don't get to step three, which is you walk out of this conference and then you kind of say, aha, these were four things that I learned and this is how I want to make blockchain real in my life. But because it could be professional, it could be career. If you don't do that small learn, do, learn, do baby steps, you're going to fail. And guess what? You're not going to go anywhere. So that, that's step three in the course of last week. Phase. Step four, of course, is mastery. When you convert that learn to cycle into a habit, into a routine, and you're able to say, hey, I don't have a lot of time, but I'm still committed to spend one hour a week, two hours a week, 15 minutes a day, improving my learn to development application of what I learned about blockchain. That's what gets you to mastery. So, my name is Kapil Akshankar. I'm based in San Francisco. I've been living there for probably the last decade. I've worked with a lot of uh, large technology companies. I've also worked with a lot of banks along the way. I've worked with a lot of uh, uh, retail giants along the way. Uh, I live in the beautiful San Francisco area and happen to be here uh, in India. Uh, right place, right time. So I said, let me come here and talk to uh, all of you. The first thing I want to talk about this evening is what blockchain really means today. And let's talk about some blockchain paradigms. So with all the hype and all the good stuff that's going on with blockchain, understand that 2019 is still absolute infancy for blockchain. We don't know what's coming ahead of the curve, but I can tell you based on what I've seen for the last 20 years, a lot of things to lined up in the blockchain window. Oops, we have a big problem. Okay, cool. A lot of things that are lined up on the blockchain radar, if you will. So blockchain will be big. Understand this. Blockchain will be big. And when I say big, it's capital B-I-G. It also means that you want to jump on blockchain right now. Every day that you don't jump onto blockchain, and when I say jump into blockchain, I'm not asking you to be a blockchain investor. I'm not saying go invest, go buy some bitcoins. What I'm saying is you want to basically start thinking in terms of how you are going to get into blockchain as a tech leader, as a manager, as an engineer, as an architect, as whatever role you want to play, essentially. The second thing is blockchain is not an applied engineer. It is complementary, and I'll talk about that in a bit. So other technologies are not going away. As we heard from the previous speaker, blockchain is just one part of the puzzle. It's there. 
but it's not going to replace other cool stuff that you're seeing on the radar. You might have but of machine learning, AI, APIization, all the good stuff's out there. It's going to remain, it's not getting defunct. Blockchain is just one more enabler backbone that will make these things better and smarter and nicer. Paradigm 3 is that blockchain, and you probably have realized this by now, blockchain sounds very simple, but it's incredibly complex. A lot of technologies, a lot of moving pieces to the puzzle, a lot of pieces to the jigsaw puzzle, and to get a good handle on what blockchain really is about, and then be able to decipher the potential of blockchain, you've got to kind of get help of a good mentor, to find yourself a mentor who can actually handhold you and get you to a point where you can actually start independently in this whole world of blockchain. The fourth paradigm is blockchain is going to change the socio-economic fabric. Just like the, the invention of the wheel or fire or electricity or sliced bread, blockchain will change your life. At the same time, also understand one thing. Blockchain will not change anything for you personally, professionally, or in your career unless you're actively involved, unless you're actively part of the blockchain movement. And the only way to become a part of that blockchain movement is to actually start doing it. Start learning, start doing it, make it a habit, make it a routine. And finally, as once again, as you probably have realized, blockchain is not just crypto, blockchain is not spelled as D-I-T-C-O-I and Bitcoin. There are a lot of things that are there in the whole blockchain space. So that's what blockchain actually means in today's world. You might have heard of some of the other principles and manifestos. You've probably heard of the Agile Manifesto, you've heard of the principles of DevOps, of the CAS principles of DevOps. Likewise, once again, blockchain has a set of what I call as true knot principles, and you can essentially create your own manifesto out of these true knot principles of consensus, security, provenance, and trust. Now, every time you start looking at a problem or you start looking at an opportunity domain against the backdrop of these principles, that's when you actually say, aha, now I have a good blockchain solution in place. So no matter what you do in the blockchain space, make sure that every thought that you have, every solution you build, every design you make, is aligned with what I call as these two north principles. The second thing I want to talk about is what is blockchain thinking? Now, if you look at it, blockchain has been around for a while. One of the metaphors, a great example of blockchain, is how a farmer's market operates. Now, some of you might have seen a farmer's market if you happen to be in any of the Western countries, but for those who haven't been there, it's, it's no different than your local uh, produce market, agricultural produce market. Anyone's open to come there, a lot of stuff around fruits, vegetables, uh, processed foods, uh, milk products, all of that. Uh, there's, a lot of innate trust in that whole farmer's market ecosystem. There's also a lot of transparency, there's also a lot of provenance. You can essentially trace back, oh, this farmer comes from this farm, this strawberry comes from that farm, this cheese comes from that farm, so on and so forth. Now, the challenge is we haven't started to think of blockchain in terms of metaphors yet. And I think that is one of the biggest things that I want to be your takeaway from this session today. When you look around yourself, you'll actually find a lot of metaphors that replicate what uh, blockchain actually is. And the moment you can start applying metaphors against blockchain, then the whole learning becomes easy. So that is why, that is how we get started with thinking of blockchain, the blockchain thinking. Now, in addition to the principles that I said, the true knot principles of blockchain, always think in terms of the two core things that you want blockchain uh, to solve. The problem one is trust, and problem two, is getting rid of the middle disintermediation. Uh, disintermediation can be a funny thing. Don't think of disintermediation just in terms of people. It can be anything that's causing friction. It can be, I was trying to figure out where the static is coming from. So it can be processes, legacy processes, it can be tools, uh, it can be a click to compute paradigm. So someone has to go and click something to move it further in the value process, uh, business process, if you will. So always start thinking in terms of, hey, where's, where's the trust missing in this problem? And what is this intermediation that I can do to solve this problem? And then that gets me into how you can think in terms of blockchain. There are business processes, there are value chains, there are uh, supply chains, 
in our natural cycles. So anytime you encounter any kind of a cycle or a business process or a value chain or a supply chain, there's a blockchain solution in there. From an engineering perspective, from a technology perspective, that solution resides. Whether or not that's going to be commercially feasible, economically possible, that's a different story entirely. Every time you see any kind of a cycle, any kind of a supply chain, any kind of a value chain, any kind of a business process, it's there. And no matter what you do, no matter what role you play, no matter what industry you look at, everything's made up of all of these processes. Uh, the names could be different, so producer could be called manufacturer somewhere else, the agent or broker might be someone else, might be an approver. So the names of these people, the names of the roles, the names of the intermediaries could be different, but they're there. And your problem, as you start doing blockchain, is to identify who these intermediaries are, the real intermediaries who are causing delays, high friction, can be in terms of effort, can be in terms of time, can be in terms of cost. Friction, think friction. So which intermediaries are causing friction? How can you get rid of those intermediaries and how you can introduce more trust? That's how you start thinking in blockchain. That is what blockchain thinking is all about. Now, if this sounds intimidating, I have some good news for you. You've been thinking in blockchain ever since you were in school. All of us learned about all kinds of cycles. The food cycle, uh, the water vapor cycle, uh, the water cycle, the nitrogen cycle, the consumer cycle, uh, the demand supply cycle, all of that. So the good news is you've actually been thinking in terms of cycles. You've been thinking in terms of blockchain. You've been embracing blockchain thinking ever since you were in school, just that you never connected the dots. Now you have the ability today, from this session onwards, to look back, connect the dots, and say, aha, I can think in cycles. I'm sure all of you can think in cycles. All of you can start identifying the, 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 the cyclical patterns, the value chain, the supply chain, the business process patterns. And all of that is a blockchain. All of that has the ability of uh, creating a blockchain solution. Also remember that synergies will come out there. So synergies create value. Uh, some of the other use cases that we just uh, spoke about in the previous session, right? Blockchain is not going to help you solve supply chain, uh, cold, uh, cold chain problems. You will need other technologies. You will need connected devices. You will need IoT. You will likely need DevOps. Blockchain will only ensure that you have the ability of being able to build trust in that entire cold chain and potentially get rid of some of the intermediaries who are causing friction in terms of cost, time, or effort. So don't think of blockchain in isolation. Think of blockchain plus. And when I say blockchain plus, it's how do you combine blockchain with Azure, with DevOps, with machine learning, with IoT, with connected devices, and with all the cool stuff that you even haven't heard of yet, but it's out there. That's kind of incubating, that's kind of just thinking. Let me move on to part three of my session. And I want you to kind of marry a real quick story from Alice in Wonderland. So one day Alice came to a fork in the road and uh, saw a Cheshire cat in the tree. Which road do I take? she asked. Where do you want to go? He replied. I don't know, Alice answered. In that case, then, Said the cat, it doesn't matter. So you've been here in this conference for the last two days, and you've probably done blockchain even before that. But the question is, WIIFM, what's in it for me? And as I said, I'm going to put on a different hat when I talk to you this evening. It's a, it's a coach hat, it's a mentor hat. I want to give you a selfish view. What's in it for you? You pretty much have two options. Option one is you either become an entrepreneur. By entrepreneur, you can be an investor on the passive side, you can be, uh, you can launch your own startup on the active side. But you can also choose to become a technology leader and embrace blockchain as a career. And that, that's a great option. That also is a great option. So make your choices. And once again, choices are not exclusive. It would also mean that you might have to cross some bridges. The beauty is in today's distributed, federated, open world, blockchain will allow you to cross over from one side to the other very easily. Blockchain will also allow you to stay connected with both the sides. You can embrace blockchain as a career. You can also embrace blockchain as your entrepreneurial venture. We've had uh, some of the other delegates here who have done that, me included. So think of that, think of the choices. 
So as you think of technology, you also think of more selfish here. And I like the word selfish. I like the word, word selfish because that's the only way you can make blockchain real in your life, in your career. That's all that matters at the day, doesn't it? So do not be afraid of blockchain. It's meant for everybody. You might have got intimidated by a lot of things that you've heard, technology, steep learning curve is very fast, all of that's granted. I agree. But don't be afraid of blockchain, it's meant for everybody. Just pick a relevant role. And speaking of roles, I'm kind of going to give you a real quick sample, metaphorical connections. You can be a blockchain generalist, and this is what you would typically call as a product manager or a product owner or a business owner of a business analyst in the more conventional non-blockchain application world, or even business world. You can be a smart contract developer, which is kind of, for, for those of you who are into uh, software development or uh, application development, you can relate to that. You can think of a smart contract developer as someone, as, as the equivalent of a front-end engineer. You can work on a lot of front-end technologies on the distributed side, but that's what a smart contract developer is. You know, understand what a smart contract is, and, how to code it. Or you can be a blockchain developer, which once again, drawing the parallel, is a full stack, everything end to end, dev, test, architecture, uh, operations release, all of that. Essentially, you understand the concepts of nodes and consensus, you can build a bridge between UI and smart contracts and all the good stuff there. And moving down the lane, you can then become a blockchain expert, which is your equivalent of uh, a software architect or a systems architect or engineering architect. Where you understand the whole big picture here, you can create a good design, you can create a good blueprint, you can actually create uh, good algorithms. But once again, these, this is only a sampling. This doesn't have to be your absolute true north. You can create a role. If, if none of these roles interest you, or you think, hey, this is not for me, you can create a new role. There are tons of roles out there, tons of relevant things out there that you can still do using blockchain. So the question then is, how to fast track your career? Blockchain is great, it's going to stay, it's going to change the fabric. You lost it? You lost the screen again? Let's see if it comes back. So the question is, how do you fast track your career? Can you really fast track it? And once again, what's there for you? So we seem to be having a problem here. Can someone help the uh, screen? Can someone get the presentation back, please? I don't necessarily need the presentation, but it would be nice to have it. I wish blockchain could have solved this problem. Unfortunately, not yet. Can someone get me back in business? This is also what happens at the end of a long, long drawn two day conference, especially when you're on a Saturday evening. By the way, folks, does this make sense? I mean, this is an entirely different angle that I wanted to present to you this evening. Does it make sense? Of yes? Yes. Of course. You have okay. to build an <coughs> ecosystem to develop experts across. So you need to have a PDF, you need to give a path for exactly Yeah. Make that make sense. So technology is one side of the story. Technology is all good, right? Technology is all good. End of the day, as professionals, you've got to figure out a way how to make blockchain real in your life. No matter what role you play. And, and that's that's a very important item, I believe. Ah, nice. The bunny rabbits are back. <laughs> so how do you fast track your career? Here's the thing, right? If I happen if I say I'm working on a cutting edge, bleeding edge, whatever edge you want to call it, I'm cutting on a real nice technology, how do I make it real? How do I make sure 
that the technology translates back into personal benefits for me as a professional. How do I fast track my career? That's, that's, that's a very important question for me as an individual. And I personally believe that that's a very important question for all of you as individuals, as professionals, as technology leaders. So I kind of have been mulling over this problem. We've been training and coaching and mentoring a lot of uh, uh, technology leaders in this space. So I kind of came up with what I call as the 90 day mastery plan. And I already defined what mastery is, which is the reason I said, let's talk about the four steps of mastery. This is your note track. Now, the note track basically is weeks one through weeks 13. Uh, and I'll give you a copy of the plan, so don't worry about it. But essentially, what it is, is two phases to it. You learn something, you do something. You learn something, you do something. Uh, and it kind of builds on incrementally. So there are some things that you absolutely need to know. You need to know crypto. Even before you can get anywhere, you need to know crypto. You've got to know Bitcoin. You've got to know BTC wallet. Uh, at some point in time, down your node plan, you've got to start building a, a distributed application. Along the way, sometime you know, in between, you'll actually end up creating a, a blockchain, all of that. So that's your node plan. It, it kind of follows the pattern of learn to. So it, it, it goes into that step three of your personal mastery. If you learn to, if, if you learn to every day, every week, every month, you will actually continue to make progress on the path of personal mastery. Now, you might say, hey, this is bogus, because you're telling me to learn crypto in week one, and you're telling me to learn blockchain in week two, and you're telling me to learn Bitcoin plus BTC wallet in week three, and you're telling me to build a blockchain in week four. This is unrealistic. I don't have time, I have other things to do, I have a day job, uh, this is unreal, it, it, it's too vast. I agree, I, I give you that. But remember this, everything can be accomplished using baby steps, which is why at the end of the entire mastery plan, 90 day mastery plan, I say rinse and repeat. So it doesn't matter. If all you have is one hour every day, which translates into five to seven hours every week, depending on how many hours you want to put in, let's take 10, let's take 10 hours. So you're able to pull together 10 hours every week. This is actually a pretty good plan because you then start to understand the terminology, you start to understand the taxonomy, you start to understand the concepts, you start to understand how do you actually get in there, you quote unquote, getting your feet wet. I'm not saying, I'm not telling you to swim on day one. All I'm saying is go there, get rid of your fear, start getting your feet wet. Right. And when you're in cycle two, you'll actually do better. When you're in cycle three, you'll do better. When you're in cycle four, you'll do better. But if you do this as a technology leader with a certain amount of uh, personal discipline or self-love, self-love for your own career, for your own career trajectory, this is actually going to put you miles ahead on the path of becoming a successful technology leader. There are others who will say, hey, I am not a learner. I'm not a learner. So I don't see any of those roles that are relevant to me. So what do I do? So here's your not a learner track. So don't let that be your excuse. And what's different in not a learner track is rather than telling you to build something, I'm telling you to... So learning is still mandatory. You can't get rid of the learn part of it. You still got to learn about each of those things, right? You got to learn about crypto, you got to learn about Bitcoin, you got to learn about BTC, you got to learn about the altcoins, all of that. So you still got to learn about it. Instead of telling you to build that entire blockchain, instead of telling you to build the distributed applications, I'm going to tell you go out there in the industry and see what use cases are out there, what products are out there, what technology companies are out there that are actually using some of these. How are value chains and supply chains and business processes consuming the blockchain technologies. So your do is rather than engineering the entire technology, your do is actually going to get you towards the path of being a product owner or a product manager or a business owner or a business analyst or any of the other roles out there. My point is, don't let that be an excuse. There's a no track, there's a not a no track. Pick your track, stay on the track, Follow the 90-day cycle, rinse and repeat. That is what makes sure that end of the conference will actually say, oh, I learned something, but now I can actually put what I learned in blockchain to good use. I can actually make use of it in my career, and therefore, I can fast track my career. So here's the question I asked. All of you have high expectations for blockchain? Yes or yes? Yes. Yes? Yes. Okay. 
All of you want to be successful in your careers, yes or yes? Cool. So the reason why you are in this conference is because you think that blockchain is going to give you the competitive advantage in the marketplace, yes or yes? Cool. So what can blockchain do for you? A six-figure USD job plus, plus a career you love that you can actually say, hey, I'm going to work in blockchain for the next five to ten years. Possible. Or maybe your next fast track promotion. Possible. Or maybe a 50% to 200% raise in an industry where 10% is the average. Yes or yes? 10% is the average? Yes? Yeah. Roughly? Maybe an inside hustle? Or maybe at some point in time you will say, hey, you know what, I'm going to get started doing something. I'm, I'm going to become an entrepreneur. Maybe I'm going to become an investor. Possible. Maybe a career transformation. I'm, I'm stuck up in a role that I don't like. I want to do something different. I'm here because I, I see a potential in blockchain. All of these are great reasons, but the only way you can make any of these reasons or some of these reasons real is by following that course of mastery. So remember, as a blockchain leader, it is possible to build a great career. And that's what I do, and I help technology leaders do a lot, uh, both in India and uh, in the Valley where I'm based. There are three things that will essentially fast track your career, end of the day. One, resources. Loads of resources out there. We, we live in a world where resources are a plenty, which is great. Potential. Second, the very fact that you're sitting in this room, listening to me, the second day of a two-day conference, when you could actually be out, out there somewhere hanging out, in, uh, hanging out in the lobby, tells me that you have the potential. So that's taken. Third thing is support. You need a coach, you need a mentor who can actually handhold you and push you over the wall. When you can align these three things, that's when you get the right ingredients, the perfect conditions for an awesome, great, incredible technology leadership career that's based on blockchain. So, there are a few next things, next actions that I did want to recommend uh, from this session. Connect with me. Uh, my name is Kapil Mokshankar, I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, that's the URL. Connect with me on LinkedIn. If you don't want to connect with me, great. Go find a different mentor. Perfect. Works for me. Make sure you have a mentor that you can actually work with. If you want a copy of this presentation along with the mastery plans, along with some of the cool links, send me a message. I'll give it to you. Not a problem. Send me your top three blockchain questions. I'm, I'm pretty sure you have loads of questions. You probably have more questions than answers because one of the great things that a conference like this does is it gets your creative juices flowing. And then you realize that, oops, these are 10 questions that I wish I had asked someone. If you have those questions, shoot them over. Can be anything, can be personal, can be professional, anything in between. Perfect, works for me. Send me your questions, three. Be sure to grab my business cards in the app. So that way, if you haven't been listening to everything that I've been saying before, you at least have a business card and you can still connect with me. Give me your business card. That way it just makes it easy, so when, when you reach out to me, I know who you are, we can stay connected. If you don't have a business card, and if you think it's good to connect with me, write down your details on a piece of paper. That works, that still works. Feel free to chat with me after the session. I'll be right here outside, maybe I'll be in the networking lounge. Feel free to chat with me, I am available. And stay connected. End of the day, that's all it takes to be a successful blockchain leader. And one of the important things that I wanted to kind of talk about and conclude this uh, session on is, listen, blockchain is great. It's going to fundamentally change a lot of things. But most importantly, unless you, it's only then that changes and miracles start to happen in your own life. You've got to be selfish. Otherwise, you'll just end up remaining consumers of blockchain. You will never get on the other side, which is where all the goodness is. Thank you, folks. Thanks for listening to me.